welcome back to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra. All right, and let's welcome our listener to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad you're here. Um, and we'll get started by having you tell the audience listening or watching who you are and what you do. Well, first, I want to um, thank you for the opportunity to be here. It is such a pleasure. I am Marlissa Phillips, and I am the author of For Worse, Walking Gracefully During God's Restoration Forward. So I am a new author, and I also have a podcast. So I have a podcast, Kairos Cafe with Marlissa. And I am also a blogger. So all of these things are recent things that I've um, started to do as God has called me to the work that he's called me to. So uh, that's who I am. Very ordinary, just uh, ordinary, beloved daughter of God trying to walk uh, according to what he's calling me to do. Awesome. Love that. Thank you so much for that. Um, All right. Well, let's talk about, first of all, let's talk about uh, you telling your story. So you said you were a new author. So, but you were, in, and you're a blogger. So you were already writing. But what led you to um, tell this story? Okay. Well, I am a recent blogger. So I was not doing any of this prior to my journey. I do have a day job, but this, this <laughs> new assignment that God has me <laughs> on, um, I did not want to write my story. So much of the time was spent saying, oh no, God, this can't be what you have me doing. So that's the prompting was uh, this unsuccessful debate that I tried to have with God saying, this could not be um, what you are asking me to do. Mm -hmm. So it was never a desire for me to write. What I always knew was that um, God had an assignment for me something that would help transform um, believers' lives. But this was, I I thought it was um, someone else and I was just helping them, Mm -hmm. Um, but that's not what God had in in store. So God just continued to press on me, press on me to write Mm -hmm. my story. And then I finally um, agreed with God. And we always know (laughs) that's the best thing to do, just go ahead and agree with him. But even in that initial agreement, my expectation was that um, I would be writing and um, or I would start writing and then there would be this shift and it would be this great, wondrous story. And what God said is, no, you're going to write through this journey. And that was um, very difficult, but one that absolutely changed my life. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Um, first of all, I just thank you so much, first of all, for your transparency, because I think that uh, those of us who are believers can definitely relate. Um, your story sounds very similar to the um, one-sided uh, debate I was having with God about starting this podcast <laughs> when I heard clearly him say, start a podcast. And I went, Mm -mm. like nobody nobody wants to listen to what I have to say so we're not doing that and then it was just me saying no 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 but him continuing to tell me at every turn it's like I couldn't have a clear thought even in the places where I do my best like have my best talks with God and my best like um messages come through and every time it was like I'm not gonna let you off the hook like you're (laughs) going to start this podcast and so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's just it's just so amazing how you know we're you know because a lot of times we've asked for the direction we've asked to be put to work we've asked them to show us show us the path show us what you want us to do how can we have impact and help others and I'm like oh and then here I am at the first turn being like no because really? it doesn't <laughs> no because exactly. that's not what I thought it looks like so that's no. not what I meant that's not what I meant <laughs> Yeah, like, mm, I mean, you got some other things in the bag, God. I mean, so exactly. I just find I find it to be one thing that I'm always uh, so humbled by and so thankful for is that, you know, God made us, made each of us, and he knows us inside out. 
And so he knows the personalities and the sense of humor. So I always um, have these funny conversations because I'm like, well, you know, I make a joke about everything, God. You know who I am. You know your child. So I'm going to try to be funny first before I do the thing you actually told me to do because uh -huh. I'm going to. And so uh, so eventually, yes, it's like you you walk toward the thing that he's called you to do. Absolutely. <laughs> and then everything else falls into place. And it's a lot easier when we submit to the, the calling. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now that saying that, you know, it sounds so simple. <laughs> of course. <laughs> God but, saying it was simple to begin with, you know. Right, right. Like it was we make we make it hard because yeah. we're well, because uh uh, I mean, because you think you know better, right? I mean, like, I'm like, I mean, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. I don't have, how how am I going to get people? Who who Who's going to come talk on this podcast? Because I'm certainly not going to listen to myself talk for like an hour. <laughs> well, and it, <laughs> but it's so simple when you just release it. Yes. And I think you said an interesting thing. And that's what I kind of had to deal with. You said, no one wants to hear what you have to say. And that's the whole thing. God is saying, they're not yes. listening to what you have to say is what I am speaking yes. through you because I know who I want to talk to and what I need yeah. to say. And yes. uh, yeah, that just I, makes sense. I think that's so true because that that uh, that is uh, us getting in our own way mm -hmm. and, and forgetting that, you know, uh, you're just the vessel. Like he's Absolutely. using, you're, he's using you. And you have to submit, you have to submit to what it is that you be, you're being called to do. Um, and that, and you know, and it, it, it's not always easy because I mean, I, I heard, I probably, I probably heard God say that in late March of 2020. And then I continued to fight each week when I kept hearing it in the shower, like, and I would hear, it's like, I'm not going to stop Kyra. And I just kept saying, well, you must be finding somebody else because it ain't going to be me, Lord. <laughs> and then I found myself in May starting a podcast. <laughs> and look at and, it. And look, it, it look, right. God does what he does, you know? And, 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 you know, and I think like, if we all could just, uh, you know, for anyone who, uh, you know, is a believer, and and what you believe in uh, what works for you, but you have to you do you have to release and you have to submit. You have to listen. You have to open. You have to open your heart to listen um, for what it is that you're truly being called to do. Um, because I feel like there's so many times that we're just circling the wagon and or almost like in that hamster wheel, like just yeah. doing the same thing, same, same thing or insanity, doing the same thing, expecting a different result when all you have to do is just like be still and listen and be ready to take action. Like you have to listen, but you also have to be willing. You have to be ready to act. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. All right. So once you said yes to I am going to, I'm going to write this story. Um, what happened next? So can you talk a little bit about the journey to writing your book um, before you get into your book? <laughs> sure. The journey was what I like to call both a battle and a blessing. Um, it, the, the journey itself, was a very difficult, probably one of the most difficult um, seasons in my life. And I um, life has been good for me, but like every believer, we have ups and downs or not just any believe any person, we have mm -hmm. ups and downs. Mm -hmm. So the journey itself was a difficult journey. And I think what was unique and what God was calling me to was a level of vulnerability, a level of transparency that we just don't see as we walk this walk. We we have um, scriptures that we go to, but the day-to-day -day living it is, is quite difficult. And what I ended up allowing God to do through me was as I walked through this 
Uh, and for me, it was my marriage, but it can be any dead space, any um, season, season that's troubling for you. Mm -hmm. What I had to allow God to do was to walk through it gracefully and where it honored him. And so at the end of the day, um, and, and whether people believe it or not, that that's whatever. God gave me the very um, stories or situations to include um, in the book. And there were some mm -hmm. things that I said, okay, God, you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> And I would, I literally had to wrestle with some of the things and, and what he allowed me to do is as you read stories in the Bible, they are not, they're not pretty. Um, mm -hmm. Some of them are downright ugly. And it was a matter of being vulnerable enough so that people can see who God is. And I don't get to determine how that happens. I don't get to determine the outcome. What I had to do was be obedient. And what I have to do is trust that God knows what he's doing. Who, if Jesus was hanging on the cross, looking raggedy, but it was the death that needed to happen so mm -hmm. that we could have life. So mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. if I had to look raggedy and be <laughs> in a space of death, then the life that it gives, it has given me and give other people, it was worth it. But it took me time to get there. And each moment as I was writing, even when I finished writing, I still was apprehensive about talking about the book or, you know, I said, well, God, um, you know, if people buy it, that's that's on you. I'm not doing anything related to it. And I had to listen to God to say, let me do this. And um, that was how my journey became graceful it it was allowing me to be restored it was god honoring mm -hmm. during a very difficult space mm -hmm. um in my life mm -hmm. i love that um oh i love that because i think that's so so true and it's the it's the thing that i would say if it's like a roadblock for people when you are supposed to be there to serve as a story or a testimony for someone else, oftentimes people, you know, just include the good parts or they give you just a little enough of the like, well, you know, I was, I was struggling with my finances and then it's just that I was struggling with my finances, but then God restored them, <laughs> you know, and it's the, it's the parts that get left out is where the, you know what? I mean, I got into the end. I only had this in my, my checking account and I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from. And I had to like, I had to, I had to go to God, you know, like I remember, oh my gosh, because first of all, I thank God for 19 years. I've been married for 19 years now. Um, we just, just so, the, but I can remember being very early in my marriage, probably I remember, I think it was like between that five to seven year mark. And I remember people saying, oh my God, like if you can make it through the five to seven year mark, you might have a chance. And I was like, oh my God, like this is, <laughs> I was like, oh, what, what have I gotten myself into? Uh -huh. But I can remember in that five to seven mark year um, range, it was very tough. The seasons were very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, there were a lot of like, there was a lot of change between like my husband and I, like I was growing as a person. Like, I mean, I got married. I consider it to be fairly young. Cause to me, I never thought I would be married to like 30 something, but I got married at like 28. So, um, it was like, I felt like I was becoming the woman that I was going to be. And also, you know, just really, um, and, and God was leading that. And I was a very much focused on my relationship with God. And, you know, and so we, we were just, you know, having some, some issues. And I remember it was like around the time of like, you know, right before like Easter. And it was just like, and I knew, you know, like in how, you know, like I knew that I needed to. I had to make a declaration to God. Like I had to be willing to give something like, uh, cause I kept saying, I'm gonna give up, you know, I give up like uh, sweets and I'm going to do this. But then I just kept hearing the Holy spirit saying, now, you know, that that's not, mm -mm, that's not it. Kyra. That's not it. Mm -hmm. And I just finally remember, cause I always like my closet has always been a place of like 
prayer for me, like in that closet, magical things happen. Uh -huh. And I remember going into my closet on a Saturday night. And I remember my husband had went out. He's like, I'm going out with my friends tonight, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, whatever, cool. You know, just, and I remember going in there and I said, you know, if it means God that my husband is saved and he knows you and he sees heaven, then I'll give him up. You could, you could take him. And I mean, and I, but when it came out of my mouth, <laughs> it came out of my mouth. I was like, oh, wow. You said wow. <laughs> that. Yeah. And then I tell you what happened. Next, overnight oh no you don't even you don't even show up at home you show up in the you show up at five o'clock in the morning wow and I just thought to myself like wow like that's really that's really that's really what it's gonna be and you know and and I thought to myself a younger version of myself would have sat and I would have allowed for myself to be shaken to be shaken by it but instead I got myself up I got dressed and went to church and I thank God for whatever it was. I was like, because I know that like, if that's what it has to be, Lord, that's what it has to be. Because I want for you, I want for him to know you and to not live a life in hell. Like, I mean, nobody wants that for anybody right. that they love. Right. And so I remember I was going out of town, like I was going out of town, like the, um, like the, and then like another week I was going to be gone to Vegas for like a trade show. And I was going to be gone for seven full days. And I remember the last thing I said, when I was uh, right before we went to the airport, he dropped me. I said, look, so I'm going to tell you this. You can either be here in a marriage or you can not be here. And I said, and if you don't want to be in one, when I come back, you've got six days to figure out <laughs> and if you want to have a set of papers on the table for me when I get back to sign I will sign them I said but what I will not do is be disrespected and I said and you know and obviously when you're praying for somebody else's soul you can't tell them like well I prayed about it and <laughs> I might be being tested <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't tell them. And I just say, but if you feel in your heart, like that is the path that you want to take. I said, I won't stand in your way because I said, what I refuse to do is be in a marriage by myself and I'm not going to do that. And I said, so you do what you need to do. And I left there not knowing. I had no, no idea on the inside. I was like anxiety. And I was like, but at the same time, peace about it. Because I said, Lord, I have done my part. Like I have, I've asked you to save him. And if I, and I'm willing to accept that if it looks like him having to move away from me for you to do that, I, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't spend another prayer or another tear begging I'm like, oh Lord, let it. When I got back, it was like a different person. Wow. When I, when I came back, he picked me up from the airport and it was just like, and, you know, I came in the house because I was like, oh, I might be being set up. There might be some papers. <laughs> there might be some papers on the desk when I get back here. But, mm -hmm. like, no, I mean, it was just, like, a different person. He was like, I'm sorry. Like, no, like, I don't want that. I mean, and, like, what you said, I had time to think about it. And, like, no, I was just out. And I just was, it was rude. It was disrespectful of me to just stay out and not even cause it. Yeah. Like, I said, yeah, but you know what? We can move beyond that. I was like, just don't let it happen again. <laughs> and at that point, from that point on, I mean, it was just like, I mean, it's not always smooth selling, but you know, I mean, those things did not reappear. And I never had to worry or think about again as to if you wanted to be here mm -hmm. and be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, like, you know, and I told that story to like a group of women um, that like I was in a Bible study with and people were like, oh, you, I said, well, because the only way that I can help somebody else is by sharing my truth. Like, I never want you all to think that like, because my life is not perfect by any means. I mean, like we'd be over here, rip, roll up and down, <laughs> you know what I said? And I just don't want, ever want somebody to think that like, that is like, that's the reality. Because the reality is that it takes, it, it's a, it takes a lot to be in a relationship, it takes a lot to be in a, it's work, it's work all the time. Like you don't just wake up every day and be like, oh my God, I love you to the ends of time. No, you have to work. Like love will not just sustain 
a marriage. Like you have to work. And I'm like, and now being with somebody for 25 years and married for 19, like every moment that we stay in it together, it's work. And I just, you know, and I just felt like there's no, I'm not helping anybody if I'm like holding that stuff in to try to make somebody believe that like we have this. I'm like, I tell people all the time, like, child, most days I want to like cut his ankles. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And that's the, I think the beauty for me and everybody's path can be different um, and people respond differently but in any relationship you have to be guided by the holy spirit so mm -hmm. if we have the holy spirit in us there is no situation that we can't um return from but both mm -hmm. people have to believe that the mm -hmm. power of the holy spirit is able mm -hmm. to do that and for me my journey was um allowing god to work on me to get Marlissa to where Marlissa needed to be, whether it was for um, uh, my marriage, which um, it was not, we we ended um, in divorce, mm -hmm. but it was how we got there mm -hmm. that, um, and, I, and I'm meaning um, the, this journey of for worse, because uh, it's a lot of how people get to those dead spaces. Right. But the premise of what God was doing in me is to say, he's still present in dead spaces. Mm -hmm. You just have to choose whether you're going to follow him yes. out of the dead space. Yeah. Because with Lazarus, Lazarus mm -hmm. died. He was dead for four days. There was a stench. Mm -hmm. And you have to believe that God is who he says he is. Mm -hmm. So for me, it became less about uh, and, and I say this um, for worse is not about my ex-husband or mm -hmm. was it for him? This was right. a God mm -hmm. showing that through whatever you are going through, that he is present and mm -hmm. he is powerful. Now, mm -hmm. the choice is yours, whether you tap into his power and his yes. presence, but he is there. He resurrects all the time. And mm -hmm. what it did for me was allow me because Marlissa had had just shifted, had just seeped down to a space where I don't know where she was. And mm -hmm. when I talk to people now who know me, they think I'm a whole new person. I'm a different <laughs> person mm -hmm. because Marlissa being Marlissa is a beautiful thing. And the way I'm able to do that is a day by day surrender, moment mm -hmm. by moment. And that mm -hmm. that's the only way I can do life now. Right. I love that. Because that that in itself is like a, it's a testimony right there, <laughs> because it's so it's so true. Like, you know, um, listening, you know, like people we talk about a lot in our like day jobs and, you know, people like in your everyday work life, like active listening and making sure. And it's like the same thing applies to your relationship with God, like listening. And I like my pastor a couple of weeks ago talked about like just calling on the Holy Spirit because so many times people forget, right? Like they, like you've got the Holy Spirit right there to guide you. And so he's like, every day you wake up, you should ask the Holy Spirit to come. Like I invite you into yeah. my day. Yeah. And, and I was like, and I thought about that and I was like, yeah, I'm like, praying in the mornings, reading devotionals and doing all these things. And I'm like, but am I asking the Holy Spirit to go with me, like to accompany me throughout my day? And then like in the morning, I just started calling before I even get out the bed. I'm like, before I even go in here and start reading and praying, like Holy Spirit, I'm, I'm up and I'm asking you to come with me today. And it's just like, it's just like you say, it's so awesome because it's like, it's, I don't know, it's like a next level. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I would have, I would have never gotten here because a part of me was, uh, I think I have learned that both my um, spouse and my children were my ex-spouse and my children were idols for me. And, you know, sometimes people say, how, how can that be? Even in your caring for your family, mm -hmm. if they are in the space where God should be that's mm -hmm. the and mm -hmm. so we think of you know how again um that seems foreign 
But that's what God says. If even if you are, mm -hmm. and I, I used to pray and pray and pray, but I was so caught up in praying for my ex-husband and mm -hmm. praying for him and praying for our marriage that my prayer time was so uh, mm -hmm. consumed by that, that mm -hmm. I missed out on my father just wants to spend time with me. Yes, mm -hmm. he wants me to cast my cares with to yeah. him, but he just wants to spend time with me. And so mm -hmm. it took all of what it took. And, and you mentioned about how God knows us. He made us. He knew what it was going to take. Because sometimes I say, God, why, you know, why did it have to be like this? Why couldn't I just have gotten divorced like everybody else? Why mm -hmm. did this, this have mm -hmm. to take place? And what he said to me was, you still wouldn't have been doing what I called you to do mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. I got you to the point mm -hmm. where your eyes were only on me. Mm -hmm. Your ears were only mm -hmm. attuned to me. And so yeah. I am thankful. And I can say, I'm not glad it happened, but I am right. thankful for yeah. what happened because where I am now, mm -hmm. I, I never would have imagined. Yeah. I never would have imagined. Yeah, I yeah, I think that is so very that's so true. And it is important. And I'm so glad that you did call attention to that because people do mistake like yes, loving, like God is first. Like he's just first. He's first. And then I mean, like in, in my house, it's God, then it's my husband. <laughs> Sometimes it's my dog. Then my <laughs> but yes, it's like, but it's God first. Like, you know, no person, human person on like trumps that like ever. Right. And, and it's important. And I think a lot of times we can lose sight of that because, um, because we get, we're wrapped up in the idea of the people that we love. And we think like, I'm, I'm here and I'm supposed to take care of these people and I'm supposed to love them. But like, if your foundation isn't strong. And if you're not pouring into, it's almost, it's like pouring into yourself, like what matters in order for you to be the best version of yourself is that you have a great relationship with God. And that means you have to make time for God. You have to put him first um, above the others. <laughs> and, and that's important. And when you don't do that, then everything suffers. Yeah. Like everything legit suffers when you get out of alignment. It's just like your car. When your yeah, car absolutely. is not alignment. Your car going to the right. <laughs> you try to go straight and it's turning to the left. Like it is out of alignment. And that's the same thing I see for believers is that when you're not in the right alignment with God, when you're just giving him, okay, you got 24 hour, hours in a day. And as you say, you're up from like, I don't know, say you're up from five o'clock in the morning until 12 o'clock at night. Well, if the only time you found to talk to him was just like, maybe uh, I said something before I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, wow, but what were you doing with the rest of the day? Like, I'm just always like in a constant, you know, conversation. Like if I'm working, I'm still like in a conversation of like, because I think two people feel like sometimes people mistake, like you have to, talk to God in this some kind of way. Like thou has said, Lord, that, <laughs> you know, thou has said that I am praying to you right now. And it's like, no, like you just talk to him. Like you, like you're just having a conversation. Like he's, he's there for you. And I'm just always like, no, Lord, you know, so, yeah. And I'm just like, I'm so glad. And I'm always like, oh, I'm so glad you know me. Cause like, you probably thought that was funny to you. <laughs> Those are probably like at least eight out of 10 of our conversations where he's like, oh my God, she thinks she's funny. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably like, oh my God, I got to get, this girl's got to lose this, this so-called sense of humor she thinks she has. <laughs> but I just think like there's some, there's something when you are just able to relax more mm -hmm. and just to have like honest, um, you know, because it's like, you could be hiding behind this, like you talking to God, but like you trying to hide, like it's all good. Like, oh, this is all great. And I'm just like, no, he seen, like he was looking. He, he saw knows. it. He knows. He knows. <laughs> so I just think, I think that's, uh, yeah, I think those are all really great points. And while sometimes it doesn't feel good to acknowledge those things, but acknowledging those things helps you to just get back on track. 
and to realign yourself with yeah. what's important and what matters. Absolutely. So, okay. So you got there, you wrote the book. And um, as we have mentioned for everyone, the book is called For Worse, Walking Gracefully During God's Restoration Forward. And you said when you wrote, when you finished the book, even when you finished the book, you said you were still like not sure. <laughs> and then, and so how did, you know, how did God help you to, you know, really get to that place of saying, because you said, you know, maybe I'm not ready to talk about just, you know, yet. But obviously, and, and also you said if people buy it, they buy it. But then how did you get to a place to where you were able to um, say, okay, I'm ready to promote the book now? I think um, what I had to be comfortable with is knowing that this is the journey and story that God had me to tell. And I knew that, but it's still, you know, nobody wants to um, tell a raggedy story. I mean, you know, we we all want this happy ending um, or the middle to be good. And, and it just was not. And I am a person who has been um, always kind of put together. Um, mm -hmm. I don't share my personal business or things mm -hmm. like that. And God was stretching me beyond um, mm -hmm. what I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. So I I resolved that, okay, God, I've, I've written the book, um, but in writing it, I still had to have these conversations mm -hmm. because it's more than the book, it is a ministry. So mm -hmm. I leave, um, you know, I'm hopeful that people buy the book, but that's mm -hmm. not how God provides for me financially. Mm -hmm. he has a work that he is doing. And so the book is just a piece of that. And I had to embrace for the first time in my life, I had been hearing um, just being called to certain things, but I was so certain it was connected to my ex-husband that I was never willing to say, whether you're hearing this or not, I know what God is showing me. But mm -hmm. for so many years, it was, you know, if he's not hearing it, it must not be, or it can't be me. And what I realized is God spoke some of these things years ago. I didn't know it would, it would be this kind of situation, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. where um, being a voice for God was what he called me to. And I never would have gotten to this space had things not happened. And like you talked about with the podcast for yourself, what I know is when you are surrendered, God's plan and purpose is going to get done regardless. And so while it could have been that God's will was for my ex-husband ex and I to have ministry together, if he chose not to, that didn't change what God spoke for me. And I had to get to a space where it may not be we, it may just be me. And I am going to be obedient to what God has called me to. So that's what I had to get to that, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, God, I wrote the book. So leave me alone. I did that part. But he said, no, this is what I am calling you to is to allow your life to be a testimony on how everyday life People can choose me in everyday life because where we are now in a lot of circles is where we have carnal Christians where they everybody is, you know, God is dope and all of that. But their actions say something different. Their life says something different. And it's almost like it's a badge of honor to do life however you want to do it. You know, if I, I have the freedom to do whatever I want to do and people walk around like, you know, yay, I'm proud of that. And God is saying for ordinary people, it's everyday walking. And that's what he's called me to do. So that's what I had to get um, comfortable with the, the promoting the book. It's a, you know, it's a byproduct of me just doing what he called me to do. The outcome is not up to me. If one person is transformed as a result of my story, 
then it was worth it because Jesus would have gone to the cross for just one person. So surely I can tell my story. And if just one person um, is closer to God or has a more intimate relationship with him because of the words that God gave me to say, then um, well done. So, you know, I said the same thing with this show. I said, if one person, as long as one person is touched by someone that I have on my show and they learn something or inspired by someone, that's all. I was like, I'm good. Like, I'm, I, I didn't, I didn't go into, I didn't go into Glow Up Girl, this business to like, it wasn't based on me making money. Um, it was just based on the fact that I wanted to give women tools to be better versions of themselves to like help them evolve. And I feel like when you're doing the right thing by people and the right thing, it will come, you know, cause it started slow for me. And I was like, I don't know, am I doing the right thing? Like, should I keep going? And every time I said that, then God would send somebody, I would interview somebody who would say, oh man, like, I really just love what you're doing. Like, this is an awesome like podcast for women. And I'm like, Okay, thank you, Lord. Because yeah. I love I love that too about God. It's like when you are feeling a certain way and you're trying to figure out should how do do how do I keep going? And then I feel like he always sends someone at the right time yeah. to tell you, like, no, you keep pushing because you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So let's talk about so tell us about the fabulous four. Okay. What is the fabulous for and how important is, is it for us to have one? So I am, as I mentioned, um, I don't talk a whole lot. Um, I had been in ministry um, for a while. And so I was kind of the person that people would come to, you know, pray for me and um, just in, in my family and the churches that we had been a part of. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, never the one to reach out um, mm -hmm. for other people. And it was, you know, kind of important to just keep, keep it together. And what I learned through my journey was I did not have to do this alone. And that was huge for me because, um, you know, for some reason in this, you know, we powerful, strong black women, we try to shoulder everything. Mm -hmm. And I got to a space um, not by choice, kind of by force, because I was broken and God just um, strategically brought four women into my life. Um, one was a dear friend from college, but we had not um, mm -hmm. been, you know, very close in recent years, brought her uh, um, back into my life. Um, another was someone who I knew, but we weren't really um friends per se, God, for her, God literally spoke her name to me. Mm -hmm. And um, so there were four women who walked this journey with me. Um, they saw the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, I was at a point where I could just be broken in front of them. And that was something that I had never experienced before. Um, if, if you ever read the book, um, it talks about I have two um, daughters that had medical issues. So I've dealt with that. Uh, had a brother that had addiction. So I've dealt with some things in life. Mm -hmm. But to be broken, me being broken, mm -hmm. um, I had not experienced that before. So these four women came alongside me. And it, it, it wasn't this um, just girl, I got your back kind of thing. 
It was walking with me, allowing me to experience what I was experiencing, mm -hmm. but always pointing me to what was true, mm -hmm. what I knew about God, what they knew about God. And so they would let me waddle um, in my little misery, but briefly. We, mm -hmm. it was, yes, okay, yes, it hurt. Yeah, that was wrong. That shouldn't have happened, blah, blah, blah. But now, what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. But now, and so that was what I needed to um, have um, women that were loving me. And I just, I, I, God knew that during this time in my life, I needed people that day in, day out, in the morning, during the night, they demonstrated Christ-like love mm -hmm. to me. And when I would have my moments, um, they didn't get upset if I said something the wrong way. They understood I was having a moment and I didn't have mm -hmm. to apologize. It was just they allowed me to go through this and to hold my arms up when they needed to be held up. Mm -hmm. um, and so for me, it was for, it can be who, however many God <laughs> thinks that you need. Maybe mm -hmm. I, I was in such a shape that I needed more than one or two. I needed four. <laughs> but just knowing that you don't mm -hmm. have to do this alone. And that was probably some of the first responses that I got related mm -hmm. to the book was mm -hmm. people talking about, you know, appreciating the transparency and vulnerability. But mm -hmm. the second thing was saying, just understanding, I don't have to do this yes. alone. And, yes. Um, so that's my fabulous. Um, I like it. <laughs> God can pick um, these women to come mm -hmm. alongside me. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's awesome. I mean, um, so let's talk about um, how did God guide you to walking in his greatest commandment? So for this, I, I would like to take a moment just to read just an excerpt from okay. um, the book. So this is um, actually chapter four and the title of chapter four is called I Give. In Matthew 22, 37 through 34, Jesus tells the disciples that the greatest command is that believers shall, shall love the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all your mind. The whole person was represented by the heart, soul, and mind together. Therefore, believers should love God with absolute love and devotion. God was strategically working on me so that I could follow his commands. My father worked intimately and intentionally with me so that I can walk in his greatest command. He healed my heart so that I could freely give it to him. God was transforming my soul and he taught me how to control my thoughts so that I could think on him. Do you see that? Ordinary me and ordinary you he wants us to follow his greatest and foremost commandment. He does not just give the command for us to spend for ourselves. He teaches us how to obey it. He taught me and he will teach you too. And so that for me was literally seeing the hand of God work in the different areas of my life. And it's, it's, that's why the the going through it is important and reflecting to be able to see that's why God had to do that that way. And he knows us. He knows what it takes for us to respond. And that's um, that's how he got me to. I'm not just commanding you like I command everyone mm -hmm. with everyone. What you need to do to walk with me, God has already given that to us. Everybody, that's a belief. It's already in us once we become saved. But then we have to walk in it. And mm -hmm. that's what God showed me that, yes, he's given me a command. But with all the commands, he's right there with me mm -hmm. to walk. I don't have to do it on my own. Mm -hmm. He's doing it. He's working in me. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love that. And it's very straightforward, you know, like it just makes so much sense. So thank you. Um, people would be able to really like resonate and grab that. Um, thank you. 
All right. So um, last question is, how can people connect to you? How can they buy the book? Where can they buy the book as well? Okay. Um, I can um, be reached through uh, email. So it's Marlissa, M-A-R-L-I-S-S-A, at four worse, the number um, four worse dot com. So um, via email, the book can be purchased um, on Instagram through my Instagram. There's a bio link and that Instagram is um, four F-O-R underscore worse. And then uh, it is available through uh, Amazon. So Amazon, mm -hmm. Barnes and Nobles, all of all of those um, outlets, it's available there. And then um, one other is the Kairos Cafe. So Kairos Cafe with Marlissa. It's a podcast. Uh, I try to um, release a new episode um, twice a month. And I say try because I really try to listen to what God would have mm -hmm. me to share. And what I've learned, God don't always um, speak on a schedule. And so um, I, I try to do it um, as frequently as um, he gives me what to say. But it's Cairo's Cafe and it's on um, Spotify and um, Apple Podcasts and Amazon. So all of those. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Yes. Uh, and I, I I really like that, you know, like just like you said, like I'm not just talking just to be talking. So I am, you know, listening and then I am delivering the message that God gave me. So I love that. All right, so we're going to transition into three things with Marlissa. I'm going to ask you three questions that just helps our audience get to know you a little bit better. So the first question is a two-parter. Um, it's how do you start and end the day? Okay, uh, I love that question because I start the day similar to what you were sharing um, when you were talking. I start the day um, in devotion and meditation. So I, I start with, I do a um, meditation, then I will um, read some level of scripture. Um, I typically will do um, an Old Testament, New Testament. Uh, and I'm usually always doing some type of um, Bible study um, mm -hmm. or small group type thing. And then I have um, my time of prayer. But before I get out of the bed, I, as you said, I say, God, I surrender. What are we doing today? And mm -hmm. I say, order my step, step by mm -hmm. step. And then I hop out of bed. So that's how I start. <laughs> yes. Then at night, um, I close um, the night with prayer. And um, I don't know, I got this new thing. I kind of hop in bed, just kind of jump in the bed. And um, I regardless of what has happened in a day, I mm -hmm. say, God, today was a good day. And mm -hmm. I hope that everything that you planned for today happened. Whatever you mm -hmm. wanted me to say, whatever you wanted me to do, whatever you, however you wanted me to be transformed today, that mm -hmm. little bit that he does in transforming every single day, mm -hmm. I hope that that happened today. Mm -hmm. And then go to sleep. Awesome. I love that. Um, the second question is, what's a goal or an intention that you set for yourself this year? What I have um, been doing this year is I kind of started the year with um, this premise for every day that I'm being surrendered. But even in that surrender, so I surrender every morning to God and mm -hmm. ordering my steps step by step. But then I transition to trusting that God is orchestrating mm -hmm. every event of my life in a day. So what I started doing, I didn't start in January, I probably started around March. Mm -hmm. I started just being very intentional in writing down things that happened mm -hmm. in the day, not necessarily um, journaling so much, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. just trying to watch for God because some of the smallest details in the day, writing right. that down so I can begin to see how God is moving. And mm -hmm. that's because if I say he cares about every detail of my life, <laughs> which he does, yeah. then I have to pay attention to every detail right. and what helps me. And I'm getting a little old, so I have to write stuff down. So I remember. <laughs> and so I am very intentional uh, because I want to 
see God moving throughout. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. And last question, where are you currently finding inspiration? I am currently finding inspiration in the communities that God has been connecting me with. Um, it is refreshing to know that there are other believers who are just as committed as wanting um, at wanting to do life God's way. I had become a little um, discouraged um, being around a lot of people or being around people who are Christians but who are not committed to making God a choice every mm -hmm. single day. And so I'm inspired by God mm -hmm. just crossing my path and connecting me with mm -hmm. um, other people. So I'm not like uh, Elijah mm -hmm. who thought he was the only prophet that was out there. <laughs> there are people who really mm -hmm. love doing life God's way. And I'm mm -hmm. just thankful to be connected to those communities. And that's what inspires me. Awesome. I love that. All right. Well, Marlissa, I have really enjoyed our conversation today and I'm so glad that you came on the show um, and that, you know, you chose this show as a place to tell your story and continue to share um, just uh, from your journey. Thank you and, so much for having me. This has been yeah. a blessing. I've, I've just enjoyed chatting with you. <laughs> <laughs> me same here. But before I let you go, I'd like for you to leave the audience three things you'd like for them to take away from our conversation today. Okay. The first thing is um, intimacy with Jesus is the only thing that matters. That That's the only thing that matters in life is having an intimate relationship with Jesus. That is the only reason why we are here. The second thing is don't be afraid to choose to do life God's way. In, in the culture that we're in, um, it is easy to just get caught up in doing life, get caught up in um, doing life on your own terms. Don't be afraid to, to choose to do life God's way. He mm -hmm. is trustworthy. And then the third thing, um, third takeaway is, we measure success um, by a lot of different ways, but ultimately God's word says that success is doing God's will. That's, that's how we are successful by doing his will. It's not how much money you have or how many people you know or what's on Instagram is, am I doing God's will? And so the last takeaway is success is knowing and doing God's will. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing those. All right. Well, it has been a fantastic conversation. You can always come back to see us in the future That's and share right. with this community. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Awesome. Stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back.